Leyden jars. In this video, I will be explaining how these devices truly work, the science behind them, and what they are used for, as well as conducting an experiment where we are able to see how they are made and what exactly they do. But first, let us refresh our understanding. To begin, electricity is the movement and interaction of electrons within a conductive material. A conductor, such as copper, allows for an easy and unrestricted flow of electrons between its atoms. However, to create an electric current, the electrostatic forces bonding electrons to atoms must be overpowered in order to release them. See here, below you could see the free movement of electrons between the atoms of a conductor. Electrical charges can be observed at the atomic level. Within atoms, protons hold a positive charge and electrons hold a negative charge. These opposite charges attract and hold the two together. However, when electrons encounter one another, they repel, given that electrons hold the same negative charge, as when protons meet other protons. In the picture below, it is easily observed that when a proton and an electron interact with one another, they attract. However, when a proton and another proton, or an electron and another electron interact, they repel. It's this same nature of attraction and repulsion which drives the function of Leyden jars. So what are they? Leyden jars are electrical components which store a powerful electric charge between two conductors created using static electricity. It was invented in 1745 by Edward George von Kleist and Peter van Muschenbroek. Although quite old, it is still used today to deliver an understanding of electrical charges. Its design consists of two electric conductors completely separated by an insulator. To the right, you can observe a Leyden jar which I created myself and which will be creating today. To commence the experiment, you'll need the following materials. Aluminum foil, a thin plastic or glass cup or bottle, preferably one that has a smooth surface, a nail or screw, tape, salt water, a PVC pipe, a small cloth, a small plate or sheet of paper, and rubber gloves. To begin assembly, you're going to want to take your aluminum foil and cut out a nice smooth sheet. Next, you're going to want to take the sheet and wrap it around the side of your cup or bottle. Be sure to use tape in order to fasten the aluminum foil you've placed to the side of your container. Feel free to trim off any excess aluminum foil left after your bottle, or just crumple it up underneath. Taking a small strip of aluminum foil, create a small lead for your container, and attach it in between the aluminum foil on the outside and the container, like so. Next, fill your container with the salt water you prepared earlier. Taking your nail or screw and the small plate of paper, place the screw or nail in the middle of the plate of paper and rest atop the cup. Make sure that the nail is touching the water within the cup and fasten the little plate to the container. Before commencing, ensure that you have achieved this position where your right hand is covered with the right glove and you're ready to begin the process. Now grabbing the PVC pipe and cloth with both hands, take your finger from your left hand and touch the lead wire exposed on the outside. Then begin running the PVC pipe back and forth without moving the position of your left hand and only moving the position of your right hand in order to create static electricity feeding the Leyden jar. So what exactly is going on with this process? Charges are being built up through the form of static electricity produced by the cloth and the PVC pipe rubbing together. 
These charges, which are static, stationary alongside the PVC pipe, are being fed through the nail on the Leyden jar into the salt water and slowly being collected on the internal surface of the cup. Now, given that you are touching the outside of the cup and the foil surrounding it, the charges that are being pushed by the electrons within the cup are slowly going into you. The more electrons you pump into the Leyden jar, the more they repel against the electrons on the outside foil. This essentially traps charges within the Leyden jar until the moment in which a discharge occurs through the connection of both sides. Now Leyden jars can be created in a variety of sizes. However, no matter the size, they still each have the possibility of shocking you. So never attempt to touch both the nail and the side foil with your bare hands. Use safety, use observation, and use common sense when approaching a Leyden jar.